Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. So today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the CTA runoff. Um, this is going to be an examination, or we're going to talk about an examination of uh, the arterial structures in the abdominal pelvic aorta in, and into the lower extremities. Um, this sort of study will be done for, for evaluation of the vasculature in the setting of, say, a cold extremity concern for ischemic etiology or for suspicion of arterial injury in the setting of trauma. Um, there are some circumstances in which this uh, sort of study will be done for preoperative planning or pre-procedural planning. Um, generally speaking, um, I'm going to be spe uh, talking mostly about the evaluation of the arterial anatomy. And since there's going to be a lot of non-vascular anatomy, I'll kind of be more broad in speaking about that and refer you to specific search patterns for the abdomen, pelvis, um, and kind of other structures uh, where kind of that comes into play, but you're going to have to want you're you're going to want to be you know careful and methodical as you go through those as well, and not just blow those off. Even though uh, a lot of times the suspicion is primarily for vascular abnormality, um, sometimes there will be sequelae of vascular abnormality in the other uh, other anatomy uh, or incidental other potentially explanatory things going on there as well. Okay, so in terms of the overall structure, how we're how are we going to approach this? Um, like with you know, any sort of study, you want to understand what's going on with the patient, what are potential um, contributors to risk, what, where is the site of, of suspected abnormality, is there trauma, you know, what, what is really, um, you know, uh, the, the global understanding of the patient and, 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 and where we want to be particularly careful to look if there is a suspected site of abnormality. We're going to look at priors as necessarily if, you know, inclusive of things like ABI, ultrasound, other abdominal pelvic imaging, other imagings of the rele relevant, you know, extremity, uh, if there is, you know, a focal you know, or a more kind of focused concern. Uh, and then we'll look at localizer images. You look at the overall study, get the sense of any sort of limitations, particularly as with regard to uh, contrast bolus timing, things like, you know, uh, streak artifact, motion, if, if any. And then we'll go through the arterial anatomy, looking at the aorta, its major abdominal and then pelvic branches uh, into the, you know, into one side, the hemipelvis, down into the uh, lower extremity as far as we can see it. And then We'll do that for each side, and then we'll go through the non-vascular structures, or, or uh, you know, um, and you know, not forgetting also the venous structure, you know, the venous structures if they fail. But then going through, uh, you know, solid organs, other abdominal, pelvic, muscular, soft tissue, osseous structures, and doing that in usual fashion as you would for the remaining anatomy. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so this is what a, such a study can look like. Um, this is, uh, you know, there's there's going to be different coverage of the anatomy for different sorts of these sorts of studies. Um, this one starts all the way up um, in the lower chest and follows the descending thoracic aorta. Well, I mean, really, we're, we, we really want to capture the fullness of the abdominal and pelvic aorta down into the extremities. Um, and so I'm just going to give you a sense of that overall appearance as we scroll through here. And here we've got the sagittals and coronals. And then as you, as you need, we can recon those into a three-dimensional view as well. And one of the major important questions you want to ask right off the bat is what is the, um, you know, and once you've kind of done that homework and under, really understand the patient overall, you want to get a sense as to first, you know, uh, as we're scrolling through, what is the adequacy of the study? Um, you know, are, are we actually filling the arterial anatomy uh, well? Uh, this is an okay study. You can see that there's decent contrast bolus delivery to the uh, lower extremity vasculature. And we, we are going to, there is, you know, venous filling as well. I believe that this study was done after or kind of concurrent with another sort of study that may have made it, you know, not quite perfect but we you know since we are seeing some venous filling but we we do you know and when we get to this point as well uh like later on you we are able to see kind of the three vessel runoff at least at the upper calf we may lose it a little bit lower down um but one of the, the things you want to uh, ask is like, is the contrast bol bolus delivery sufficient to actually evaluate the vessel lumen um are you know does the patient have, and you can kind of, I actually really like using coronals for, for this sort of thing, um, and then kind of to MIPS uh, as, as needed to kind of get a look at the overall vasculature and, and then zooming in. You know, are, are we able to 
really evaluate the vessel lumen. You know, are we able to, is anything obscured by street artifact, the patient hardware, or if there's motion or, or if there's, you know, other artifact, can we, you know, are there any areas where we can't really see what's going on? So that's kind of important to get a global sense of. And then especially if this is like um, for underlying or diffuse uh, disease, you want to get a sense as to Globally, get a just just thought. Is there a significant change in power? Is there an obvious as you're scrolling through obvious large occlusion or obvious traumatic injury? Just as a big, you know, overall extent of of abnormality. Okay, and then it's going to be good practice to, to take a look at our localizers, you know. So interestingly here, so this is a study of kind of basically the abdomen, pelvis, and lower extremities, but localizer images will, link, it will incorporate the entire chest. And, it, you know, it, it's always good practice, especially to look at parts of the anatomy that are not going to be captured on the full uh, the fullness of, of, of the cross-sectional uh, CT images. So just make sure we're not seeing any major lung, mediastinal, or, you know, uh, kind of upper chest sort of abnormality, uh, you know, anything up here um, so that's always good practice okay so once you have a sense of the broader extent of abnormality you know uh, uh, what's going on with the patient prior studies we, we, we can start um, looking at the top of the study and use a top-down sort of approach I just want to note um, and then we will come back to that with especially for imaging the lower chest you're gonna see the heart you're gonna see some of the lower pulmonary arterial vasculature makes make sure there's not filling defects here and not there okay well we're, you're gonna come back and look at the non arterial anatomy later but uh, just just to keep in mind so starting up at the the uh, upper extent of the aorta we're going to follow that down and then all the way through the abdomen and pelvis and what we're going to do as as we look is we're going to ask ourselves some questions as to is the aorta normal caliber um is it abnormally large you know in rare cases abnormally small um are there are is there any sort of acute pathology things like intramural hematoma or dissection you know, let's just make this large to, as as we as we go through um intrahuma intramural hematoma, dissection, pseudoaneurysm, contour abnormality. Is there, you know, more commonly things things like atherosclerotic plaque, calcified or cotton calcified, is there stenosis of the larger uh, kind of the, the aorta as we go down? Um, if we are seeing plaque, you know, is this ulcerated? Is the ulceration penetrating through the expected location of the intima? Things like, you know, things like this. Are there, are there any filling defects even in the aorta otherwise? Are there inflammatory changes surrounding and we're going to do that as we scroll through um, and just looking at the aorta itself um, and then you know we're as we go through we're also going to evaluate major branches that we see so like here we have the celiac axis coming off right and then we're going to follow that um, and look carefully uh, at each each of his branches as far as we can um, out uh, and then we're going to begin asking ourselves the same sort of questions any sort of um, aneurysm, pseudoaneurysm, dissection, other acute pathology, as there's, you know, um, atherosclerotic disease, stenosis, occlusion, things, things like this, and then surrounding inflammatory changes. You know, these sorts of questions we're going to ask of all the uh, arterial anatomy. And as we go to the ciliac axis, we're going to watch it, let's see, come off here. And then off, we're going to, you know, track the, uh, let's see here, um, comma hepatic, proper hepatic, up into the branches, into the liver, okay? It can be useful to make these slices a little thicker and take a look at MIPS as well. Uh, let's see, we got some MIPS or averaged images and then follow the GDA down, okay? And just make sure we, we follow these branches out as far as we can looking for abnormality, okay? Um, also looking at the left gastric, okay? The splenic artery, following that all the way out, all these things to the end organs and then using a combination of, of MIPS, um, average thin slices okay doing that and then correlating i actually particularly like the uh coronals to do oops let's see if we got this back here we go and it's, it's it can be useful to take a look at the coronals here we go following these branches out you know uh okay and to do that as well and then, and then we're going to do the same in looking at the the SMA as it comes off, following its branches all the way out, you know, as far as we can. Okay, just give me, you know, ileal sequel branches out off the end back here. Okay, and then we're going to go, and then we're going to try and find the takeoff of the IMA right here. Follow that as far as we can into small branches. Right, looking for uh, any sort of abnormalities associated with those. 
we're also going to look at the renal arteries, you know, um, coming off here. We've got two main arteries coming off, two larger branches coming off the right, one on the left, and it can be very useful actually to correlate with coronals for the, uh, you can see that well here, for the renal arteries, okay? I should say also say that the uh, sagittals are particularly good for the origins of the uh, the mesenteric vascul arterial vasculature. Just to get a sense here, if there's any extrinsic compression, if there's any sort of uh, abnormality of the origins. Okay. And so you want to follow those to end branches as best you can. And then in particular, you know, with and then you know, as I said, with the the renal anatomy, uh, using the coronals and seeing if there's you know multiple branches, if there's any kind of anatomic variants or any sort of vascular abnormality there. Following then down the, uh, the abdominal aorta to its bifurcation. And then at this point, we have to choose between left and right. We're going to pick one side and look at the um, one hemipelvis uh, and then the subsequent lower extremity arterial vasculature, right? And then again, um, as we look at each branch, we're looking for, you know, for abnormal size, aneurysms, pseudoaneurysms, dissections. We're looking for, you know, arterial um, atherosclerotic disease, stenosis, occlusion. We're looking for inflammatory change. Um, you know, in the setting of trauma or any sort of concern from bleeding, you may want to look for extra and 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 uh, you know uh, any you know evidence of traumatic etiology as well. But these are the things we're keeping in mind as we're going through this this uh, vasculature. We're going to follow then, you know, from the bifurcation, the common iliac. Then, you know, and I like to do the kind of um, the internal uh, iliac first, following those out as best as we can. There's, there's going to be uh, frequently differing anatomy there um, or, or, you know, many anatomic variants. Um, so, but we're just following those branches out as best as we uh, as we can to end organs to see if there's any sort of, you know, uh, abnormality associated with those. The kind of thing you want to keep in mind in particular, and it's not particular, very common, but, you know, uh, in some circumstances you might see a persistent sciatic artery um, and, you know, and correlating with, a, 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 you know, what could be a, a then small uh, superficial femoral or profundal uh, art artery further down on that side. But those will be generally uncommon. We're just going to take a look at overall any sort of disease affecting the internal uh, iliac branches, right? And then subsequently following the external iliac artery out. And by the way, as we get to the smaller arteries, and actually it's generally good practice for basically all the arterial anatomy, if we are finding abnormality, it can be particularly useful to zoom in, window extremely very tightly, and follow those, you know, very closely, especially characterization of any sort of abnormality we're picking up, okay? Um, so we're going to follow out the now external iliac artery. Um, see that come, follow that. All right, and then we're going to assess, you know, take off. We're going to note the take off the inferior epigastric artery. Um, we're going to look for any sort of anatomic variants where, like, you know, this this you know can be a, and as many as like a third of patients, this uh, corona mortis, the kind of uh, anatomic variant of, of the obturator artery, which can be more more so at risk for trauma in for trauma uh, in blunt traumatic um, sort of scenarios. Um, and then we're going to follow this down. You know, we are going to see kind of other branches coming off here, okay? The, you know, superficial, deep circumflex, iliac arteries, that sort of thing. But uh, just getting a sense as to making sure that things look uh, okay. And then here, um, past this inguinal area, we're going to have um, a split here of the external iliac artery. No, there we go. Here we go. Well, we're going to first get the, uh, you know, as it passes through there, we're going to, it's going to turn to the femoral common femoral and then we're gonna have to a split sorry a split of that common femoral into the superficial uh and uh kind of deep or profunda femoral artery uh, i like to do the uh, the deep one first and i just look and make sure those are for, you know patent and see if there's any abnormality associated with that and we, we just have to be careful on this particular study because there is venous filling here so we just be careful to track those arteries uh, specifically um within the arterial anatomy okay so we're just going to show you what this looks like on coronal MIPS. Okay, and just that can be kind of useful to further get a sense of any sort of abnormality affecting those. Okay, and then we're going to follow the uh, superficial femoral artery down. Right, 
taking a look through the popliteal region, popliteal artery. Okay, there's going to be geniculate branches that come off here. You may want to note those as they come off. Um, and here, up at kind of like the behind the knee, upper calf region, we're going to have you know, the uh, uh, branching, or it can, you know, some people saw, say trifurcation of the runoff vessels. You know, there's there's many variants of this. They they will come off in different orders and different sizes, and it's good, good to have a sense. Uh, it's kind of beyond the scope of just this video to talk about all those variants, but um, any number of these can can come off. Uh, it can be different, you know, different sizes or come off first. Um, uh, in, in different positions, but generally speaking, you're, you're, you know, in many cases, we're going to see um, kind of a takeoff. Let's see on the right here if we can if we can if we can distinguish these. Um, let's see as we go back down. Here we go. We got anterior tibial coming off here, and then typically we're going to want to see um, you know the uh, that'll be the tibial perineal trunk, um, with then subsequently branching into the perineal and posterior tibial artery and we're going to follow those as best as we can down it's going to work it's, it's this is this is the sort of study where if they were really concerned about more distal lower extremity arterial anatomy um, you would probably want to do an, a, an additional study of with contrast bolus timing uh, as best as you could for the lower extremities because we really are starting to lose it down here you know we can kind of see a three vessel runoff um but only once some of that uh, venous anatomy kind of becomes, uh, and it can be very useful uh, to, to zoom up and to, and to window pretty, pretty tightly there, okay? Yeah, so we are kind of losing it down there, but uh, we are seeing decently, at least up to the upper calf, right? And, and again, it's going to be very useful um, to correlate across different projections here to get a sense of that anatomy. between the coronals and the sagittals, and then using, um, here we go, this can be particularly useful as well. Yeah, to see that anatomy come off and see the preservation of those arteries in into the, as they, you know, as they kind of extend down into the lower extremity, okay? Um, if we can, if you can see it, you know, following that all the way down to the ankle and then to the extent able, and this is pretty going to be uh, minimally, uh, <laughs> maybe not necessarily feasible on this sort of study, but to get, get a sense as to uh, look, you know, looking for dorsalis pedis, plantar, plantar arteries, uh, and, looking, and looking at, the, you know, the uh, plantar arch, um, you know, on a more optimized study. So this, in this particular study, we do not have, you know, a more delayed phase that's going to be helpful to get a sense of those, but those are things to keep in mind. Um, when, when doing that. And again, uh, correlating across the multiple projections and, and just keeping in mind that there are some anatomic variants there um, uh, and, and that can be particularly useful. So, so we've, we've talked in, a, in this video, I've shown you, you know, looking at this right uh, lower extremity, the right hemipelvis, but you're basically gonna then repeat that process for the left hemipelvis um, in the internal iliac distribution, external, femoral, you know, profunda, superficial, popliteal, and then run, you know, run runoff vessels all the way to the left. And basically, going to repeat that process. Um, at this point, we'll have you know covered uh, at least you know from a basic approach the arterial anatomy to the bilateral lower extremities, and then from from this point forward, we're going to kind of transition into an evaluation. Um, of the kind of non-arterial anatomy. And this is going to include both like the, you know, the usual visceral structures as well as the, you know, venous structures. Um, so uh, kind of, you know, I'll, I'll speak about this in, in broad concepts, but, uh, you know, you're going to want to go through the lower chest, remembering the, the heart and mediastine, you know, and then contrast filling of lower kind of chest arterial cardiovascular structures. We're going to go through the solid organs of the, you know, of the chest um, and abdomen and pelvis, you know, recognizing, you know, uh, you know, at, in usual fashion, bowel, you know, bowel, GI, GU sort of um, uh, anatomy. And, and I think one of the, the key things to remember um, that is really kind of important when looking at these sort of studies is that because of the contrast bolus timing, especially, you know, this one has some components of, of venous filling and more parenchymal, uh, uh, you know, filling. Um, but because of a predominantly arterial phase, you're, 
in some cases going to be able to pick up arterial enhancing lesions and, and, and structures that you may not see on other conventional imaging. So that uh, are you know uh, more kind of portal venous or whatever phase that you frequently will get through the abdomen and pelvis. So that that's something to just keep in mind as we look through. Okay. Um, and you know, so we're gonna you're gonna go through, look at all the solid organs, look at out at all the usual abdominal pelvic anatomy. Being careful also then, um, to, to, you know, to the extent able of looking at the venous structures, the ilocaval system, the portal system, looking at you know, uh, peritoneum, nodal stations, you know, what, which various fascial planes. Um, and in the, you know, and especially, you know, as we are looking at the anatomy, if there are, you know, in various uh, concerns, looking at the, the, the um, nodal stations and at the soft tissue surrounding the arterial and venous anatomy, if there's any involvement, whether inflammatory, a nodal involvement of any sort of uh, mass lesions that, that may be correlating with whatever the patient is presenting with, that's kind of useful to ha have a sense of. Um, and then, you know, as usual, as we go through any other sort of uh, cross-sectional anatomy, we're going to go through the osseous structures uh, carefully, um, you know, not forgetting, you know, things that may be cor correlating with patient symptoms. You know, if, if there's, there is this from a, from a clinical standpoint, can, it may, uh, there can be some difficulty there, or there can be an overlap of um, kind of a vascular uh, claudication sort of a picture and neurogenic sort of thing. So oh, you, you definitely want to be looking at the spinal canal for masses for, you know, high grade, you know, stenosis as best we can see on CT, obviously high grade neuroforaminal stenosis thing, you know, these sorts of things just to keep in mind. And then, um, obvious osseous lesions, things like that, and then through the soft tissues, the muscular tissues, all the way in the entirety of the visualized abdomen pelvis, all the way down to the, the musculature, other, you know, um, soft tissues in the bilateral lower extremities, um, and especially in the setting of trauma, uh, you know, being very careful um, with, with, with the, with the um, osseous structures and things, because you may pick up new subtle abnormalities that's not seen on prior imaging, just to, just to give you a sense. Um, uh, of, of the potential additional things that, that whereas a runoff study in that certain circumstance may not be initially ordered for that, that will, you will, uh, uh, in some circumstances see new abnormality just because we are doing kind of like, this, you know, uh, C CT for, for, for things that may have been seen in some other radiographic studies before. Um, and so once you've kind of gotten a whole sense of what's going on with the, you know, all the potential findings on the study, you know, synthesizing that, correlating with the laterality, the focus of initial concern, and seeing if, are you explaining what's going on with the patient and trying to put together all the findings from the vascular components of the exam, the non-vascular, um, and, 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 and trying to really uh, put that together as best as you can when you ultimately report the study, okay? So that uh, uh, was a, kind of a broad overview and introduction to how to go through these, this is actually with such, you know, with so much anatomy, it, it ends up being, it can be a complex study, especially if there is a lot of underlying abnormality. But let's just recap quickly to give you a sense of what we talked about right there. So um, in approaching a CTA runoff, in, and in this particular circumstance, we're looking at the whole abdomen and pelvis, the, you know, uh, the bilateral lower extremities, you're going to want to understand patient, con oh, like as always, the indication, history, what's going on with the patient you know, any known abnormalities from prior, from priors or from clinical context being, you know, good practice of take, taking a look at those localizers, um, and then understanding limitations, particularly of artifacts of conscious bolus timing, looking at the arterial anatomy, um, which can be usefully done from a top-down approach, and, uh, the aorta, major branches, and the abdomen and pelvis, down to the extremities, understanding you know, any sort of impact of limitations, anatomic variants, things like, you know, uh, and keeping those in mind as we uh, evaluate the study and then going through very carefully the non-vascular structures as is usual, you know, uh, in usual fashion as we would do for CT abdomen pelvis or for uh, extremity uh, imaging.